Welcome to Estate Planning 101. My name is Yolanda. I am a wealth advisor and it is my goal on my social media platforms and the trainings that I put out is to give you easy, actionable tips, content and strategies that you can use to manage your money well and build generational wealth. And in this training, we're looking at estate planning and a lot of the times, the middle class, you know, we build this nice nest egg, we got our insurance, a couple of properties, some shares or something ready to pass on to the next generation. And the thing that lets us down is estate planning. And today I want to show you uh, why just having a will is not enough for estate planning. I want to tell you what uh, everything that goes into estate planning and show you how you can really plan for your family to ensure that at that time when you're no longer here, there's a smooth transition in terms of your assets that you leave behind for your family. At any time, if you're looking for any sort of financial advice, feel free to reach out. You can visit my website. It's www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com. You can always email me at yolanda at financiallyfabulousfemales.com. So Financially Fabulous Females is a movement that I've put together to empower females to grow their wealth and to manage their wealth as well. I've put tons of content out every week. Uh, every Monday, there's a new episode of the Wealth Nation podcast for the past two years. We have lots of uh, information, lots of really interesting people that we've spoken to about money and business. And you can listen to that on iTunes and Spotify. We also have a YouTube channel and a new video out every Thursday. We also have a kid's book. It's a financial literacy workbook that you can work with with your kids. Uh, we have a course coming up for teens. We also launched a course for kids. And it's training like this, our live events, online training. And uh, the thing that I'm most excited about is Financial Success Summer 2021. Now, depending on when you are doing this training, you can either buy tickets at Financial Success Summit uh, 2021. It's financialsuccesssummit.net and get those tickets. Or you can sign up for our post virtual summit, all of the recordings, everything, all the notes, all the resources taken care uh, for you. So check out our Financial Success Summit website where you can uh, listen to all that pre-recorded information from our virtual conference. You're on this training today. It's not actually an open training that I give to everybody. It's specifically for our private wealth club called Wealth Insiders. So this is an exclusive platform that I've created for select number of my clients to educate them about matters of finance in a South African content. So we have a special members area on our website uh, with tons of training videos on investments, wealth building, money management, uh, wealth protection, a lot of uh, tools and resources, downloadable Excel sheets, uh, ebooks and guides that you can use, all available to our Wealth Insiders. Uh, we also have a monthly Q&A session on Facebook. If you have any questions, uh, I give you my comments uh, regarding money and finance for the month as well. And this is one of the features of Wealth Insiders is the monthly live trainings. And you have been invited to join the monthly live training. So you know, have an idea of what the Wealth Insiders get. So if you want to join this platform for a small monthly fee, you can go to www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com. Uh, it's not a contract or anything like that. You can join at any time. You can cancel at any time and have the best um, of financial education that's really unbiased no big products being promoted, but just pure financial education. So let's try and understand what is your estate. Believe it or not, no matter how little or how much you think you have, you have an estate. In fact, nearly everyone does. Your estate consists of everything that you own, your possessions, your cars, homes, um, your bank accounts, investments, life insurance, furniture, absolutely everything that you have that you can put to your name is part of your estate. No matter how large or how modest, everyone has an estate and something in common. You, you cannot take your estate with you when you die. And that's one of the reasons for estate planning, which is basically the process of arranging and managing your assets during your lifetime so that when you die, your estate is transferred according to your wishes and the right people uh, get your assets as you have decided so why you need, do you need to have estate planning? Well, people put off estate planning because they don't think they have enough. Uh, they're not old enough. 
It can be costly, it can be confusing, and they will have plenty of time to do it later, but they do not know where to begin and who can help them, or they just do, know, do not know what to think about. And when something happens to them, their family has to pick up the pieces. And this is one of the reasons I'm promoting estate planning is that you don't know. Life is so uncertain. We are in a pandemic, COVID-19. People in their 20s are dying, not just the older folks. So estate planning is for everybody. Okay. And when we do estate planning, when you do pass on, it allows for the efficient administration of your estate. I'm sure you, everybody knows somebody who's having the state wound off for years and years and years because of the complications and the hassles of not doing any sort of pre-planning. Now it's guaranteed that we're going to die. So why are we not planning for it? I know it's not a nice thing to, to think about, but if you have loved ones that you want to, to enjoy life, to enjoy what you have left for them, the right thing to do is to do estate planning. Okay, estate planning will also ensure that your heirs of your choosing uh, get the assets that you want. And a lot of the time folks think, okay, I have a will, I'm sorted, but that's not the case. So will will ensure that your estate is dissolved as you want it to be. But that's not the only thing that is incorporated into estate planning. And you'll find out more about that as we continue with this training. Estate planning also incorporates providing for your dependents and the protection of minor beneficiaries. And this is the major one. If you're a parent, you've got under 18 or mentally incapacitated uh, dependents, you need estate planning, proper estate planning. You also want liquidity. You want cash in your estate to settle your debt, uh, to settle the death taxes because government wants their cut. You also want to cover the state duties, capital gains. You want all of that covered. You also want to provide a monthly income for your family and dependents because remember when you die, everything is frozen. Okay, and you want to make sure that all of that is taken care of. You want to minimize the impact of taxation. You want to do that. That's very important. Lots of nice tools to avoid paying taxes on your hard-earned money. And proper estate planning will allow you to do that, to minimize the impact uh, of your state duties, your income tax, your capital gains, and transfer duties. And a detailed estate plan will take into account all of your assets, uh, your current circumstances, and will ensure that you leave behind a nice legacy when you pass away. And your intended beneficiaries do benefit from what you have to leave behind. Now, <laughs> the cost of death, often we think it's just a funeral, but honestly, it's not. It's executive fees, the taxes, capital gains, income tax, VAT, estate duties, claims from your estate, accrual claims in, ter in terms of your marriage regime, uh, the settlement of all of your various liabilities, if you've got property to if you have property to live on, conveyancing fees, if it's under bond, bond cancellation fees, the master's fees, advertising, insurance costs while your estate has been administered and the licensing fees, the list goes on and on and on when it comes to the cost of death. So who is estate planning for? It's not just for old folks, guys. It really isn't. If, and it's not just for people who own property. It's for absolutely everybody. And we cannot successfully predict how long we're going to live, what illnesses we're going to get, what accidents are going to happen to us. So we need to be prepared right now. And it's not just for the rich and the fancy who have millions and billions and properties everywhere to, uh, to plan in their estate. Good estate planning is often more impactful for families with moderate, uh, modest assets because the loss of time and funds as a result of poor estate planning, is more detrimental. And as I said, when we first started, the middle class does a fabulous job in getting their life cover, accumulating properties and small assets. But it's estate planning that lets them down because they've accumulated this nice asset, but they haven't made provision for the cost of death, all of the various costs that we think about uh, that we listed previously. So what happens is the executor, he now has to go and sell off the assets that you left behind for your kids, for your spouse, just to settle all of those fees. And your family is left with just a fraction of what you intended to leave them. So the various planning tools, I know you think it's a will, 
Yes, a will is just one of the tools in estate planning. It's not the essentials of estate planning. Then you have the trusts, the living trusts, the testamentary trusts. And uh, I want you to check out our website. It, um, I want you to check out our YouTube channel. I spoke to an attorney about uh, how to efficiently use trusts as a estate planning tool. Also, there's legacy protection as well. All those costs that I spoke about previously, all of that needs to needs to shield, you need to shield your family from all of that and the, the the funds and the assets that you leave from them. Legacy planning should be separate for, from uh, what you leave your family. Also, there's a nice, uh, also the last survivor benefit, if you married a very cheap, effective tool to combat all the various taxes, the debt taxes that occur once the last surviving spouse does pass. Now, let's talk about a will for a bit. Now, it's basically the document that states how you want your, your assets to be distributed. Anybody over 16 may be able to draft this will, but it's important to keep in mind that you got to keep on updating your will as you move through the various stages of life. You're single, you get married, you have kids, uh, grandkids, you buy a home, you accumulate other assets. All of this needs to be taken into account uh, when your life st stages change. So it's just not a once-off exercise. This is something your, your financial advisor should be doing with you in, a, in an annual basis. If your circumstances have changed, you've got to update your will as well. Now, everybody should have a will, irrespective of, of how much you think you have or don't have, as it allows you to leave a legacy in line with your wishes. If you work a lifetime to build up an asset base, which carries specific meaning and sentiment, a will will allow you to determine who will benefit from it and in what proportion. It avoids your asset base being passed down in terms of the law of interstate succession. So if you die without a will, a very series of laws of uh, dying interstate comes to play. And basically, you have no control over how everything goes. So as an advisor, I really encourage people to, to get a will in place. And one of the significant things that we need to list in our will is uh, beneficiaries for under 18 kids. And sometimes if you're uh, an, a single parent the, the surviving parent gets custody of the kids and they might not be the ideal person, all right? And you want to state that in your will. And also when it comes to your organs, you can even donate your organs as well. All of that gets incorporated into a will. So the key, the key players in your estate plan, drafting your estate plan is one is your lawyer. He will draft your will. He'll also wind up your estate. Uh, financial planners, we can also draft wills as well, but uh, we work with specialists. They specialized in doing it, so we leave it to them. Also, your accountant, all of the taxes that we spoke about, doing all those calculations, that's their plan. And all of the various solutions. <laughs> as a financial planner, we provide the solutions to make sure that uh, you're not overpaying in your taxes, that your the passing of all your assets is, is done smartly within all the uh, and all the laws that's available to us in South Africa. Then we have the executor, and his function is to locate and collect all of your assets, liquidate the state's liabilities, and even distribute the balance of the state to the heirs. So what happens exactly when you die? Well, in South Africa, when you die, your estate must be reported to the to the master of the high court in the area that you lived. And it can take anywhere from three weeks to three months. I mean, you know the justice system in this country. And the thing that you need to take note is that your bank accounts are frozen. And if you are a breadwinner, you need to make provision for your family at this point. Because you don't know when you're going to die, how you're going to die, who's going to have your PIN code to your bank account, your internet banking. What happens to your family if your bank account is frozen? Then it comes to your life insurance. So a, prim a preliminary investigation and the accumulation of information following your death, um, your executor will interview the family, complete the required documentation to report the estate. This is then 
documented with the master of the high court and the collection of all of the information starts your tax returns cap- capital gains income tax vat all of that needs to be done and the executor does that and then you have got to prepare for the formal liquidation and distribution of the account and the collation of the supporting document required to lodge the liquidation and distribution with the master of the high court so that is why it's important to pick somebody uh, to be your executor who's well versed with this who knows how to get it done smoothly knows where to go or how to get sort things out when a roadblock is hit and for sure roadblocks will be hit so upon your passing all your assets your income your liabilities is referred to as your deceased estate and this deceased estate is vested in the master of the high court who then appoints an executor to manage the affairs of the estate if you didn't appoint somebody uh, competent enough the master can say you know what go find a lawyer go find an accountant go find a financial advisor the primary function of the executor is to locate all of the assets liquidate the estate's liabilities and distribute the balance of your estate to the heirs the key thing there is the balance because sars need to take their cut your debt needs to be paid and then whatever's left then it will be distributed according to your will it also it's also nice to know that life insurance policies go directly to the nominated be- beneficiary and they don't really form part of the estate unless you leave a life impo- uh, policy to the estate to cover all the various costs right this is provided that there's it's a natural death um there is a body remember no body no life insurance and again if you die into a state different set of uh, laws apply to you people go searching for a valid will uh, your executor will be the legal guardian and legal representative of your assets in your deceased estate and res- responsible for ensuring all of the state's debt are paid correctly first and sars gets their cut first and then your beneficiaries so what is the role of the executor when you got a he's got or she's got to identify your assets your liabilities uh find your creditors give them an opportunity to lodge claims against your estate to ensure all of the estate debts are paid and remember sans always gets paid first beneficiaries are not settled until the debt is settled and uh executors do charge 3.75 plus vet so if you have a sizable estate that's quite a pretty chunk of money and you don't want your assets to be sold to be covering executive fees and that is why you need a financial advisor now if you leave property to your children without providing liquidity for the home loan to be settled for the conveyancing costs for the registration uh what happens is they're going to sell off your assets to to make sure all this all is done if you don't have enough liquidity in your state to pay all of your debt your assets will be sold all right so it's important to sit with a financial advisor where we can take a look at uh, what's the size of your state what's your what's your duties that are due what are the costs that are due and we plan for those costs so what do you have to look for when you're planning for your estate one you got to provide for your various fees ensure that there's money in your state to look after your family uh, since everything is frozen Okay, one thing that you should always remember to do is to nominate the guardian of your minor children and also make provision for them as well because remember minor kids cannot inherit large sums of money they cannot inherit life insurance fixed property so ideally you want to use the trust vehicle here the testamentary trust so basically how that works is once you die the trust will be set up and uh, look out for our video on trust on on youtube it explains everything and how everything should work and why you need a trust especially if you have under 18 kids the costs that are involved um it can be expensive it can be ugly um i hope that um that i'm scaring you honestly hope that i'm scaring you because all of this happens and you're dead and gone and it's your family that is suffering something that is a lot of the time really overlooked in estate planning is the process of minor children and the surviving spouse having the legal rights to claim maintenance from the deceased estate so if you're not providing for the guardian and you, or even if you die into estate whoever gets your kids can make claims against your estate and you know people don't have the right intentions so it's important to have all of this written down and planned for 
in your estate plan. So what happens if you don't conduct estate planning? Well, as you can see, the screen is blank. Because if you die without a valid plan, any assets you own in your individual name is without a beneficiary. If you're married and you have children, your spouse and children will receive uh, their share. It means your spouse can only receive a fraction. If you have additional partners and children outside of a legitimate marriage, um, other claims can be made there. And they might not be enough to go around and you don't want a bitter fight at the end. If you've given the choice and you do have a choice, wouldn't you prefer that these matters be handled privately by your family and not by the courts? Wouldn't you prefer to keep control over what, who receives what and in what proportion? And if you have young children, wouldn't you prefer to have a say in who will raise them if you cannot? So how do you get started with estate planning? First, you make a list of your assets and liabilities. Okay, you know, make a note to yourself how you want your stuff distributed. And then you sit with your financial advisor. Sitting with uh, a lawyer is great. They can draft your will. But what about liquidity? Your lawyer can't provide you with liquidity. Neither can your accountant. Unless your accountant is a financial advisor. Or unless your lawyer is a financial advisor. Okay, your, your uh, lawyer or your accountant can't give you uh, last survivor benefits. A financial advisor can do that. So the financial advisor is the central point, drawing in the accountant when he needs the accountant, drawing in the attorney when he needs the attorney. And uh, he's the person or she's the person holding your hand through this process and guiding you through this process as well. So your advisor would determine the value of a state, calculate the costs, recommend solution, provide you cover for death taxes, the various fees and the inter immediate expenses for your family. 
although I said we can draft a will, but we will get an attorney, an experienced attorney to draft a will for you. And even, you know, when it comes to winding off estates, it doesn't take years and years, six to nine months tops is, is how the estate is wound up. And uh, will also facilitate the setting up of a trust if needed. We're not, um, we're not uh, trustees or anything like that. That's for the lawyer to do. And like we said, we'll pull in the lawyer when we need the lawyer. But this is the value of a financial advisor at this point. If you haven't done it, and if your financial ad- advisor hasn't done it for you, reach out and we can uh, assist you wherever you are in the country. So the way forward from this point, download my estate planning toolkit. I will email you a link to that toolkit or reach out. I can get that toolkit to you. Watch that YouTube video on everything you need to know about trusts in South Africa. All right. And trusts, they're just so big and it's impossible for me to cover it in this training. And also see your financial advisor and begin your estate planning. And if you don't have an advisor, if your advisor hasn't advised you um, efficiently, when it comes to estate planning, you can reach out. I work with South Africans locally and internationally. It's Yolanda at financiallyfabulousfemales.com. Thanks for joining me in this training. Uh, I hope to see you inside Wealth Insiders. We do a training like this every month uh, as we need it. And also go to www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com forward slash join and you can get catch up on all our past trainings and the new videos that we release every month. All right, so thanks for joining us. We'll talk soon.